it's coming home. So I've had these 3D printers now for a few months and I've done a few little prints here and there. However, I wanted to really test myself and have a big project ready for this YouTube channel I've just started with Craig. So here's my first video as I attempt to 3D print the World Cup. Now obviously it's World Cup season as I've made this video we are currently halfway through the World Cup England is still in it and I'm, I've just really I've, I've always admired like the artistic style of the World Cup it's oh, one of them symbols that everybody knows the world over and I would love to have a replica trophy in my trophy cabinet. Obviously I won't be recognised as a World Cup winner however having a replica trophy I'm still putting it on my CV as World Cup holder. I've had a quick browse through Thingiverse where I get all of the free STLs that I can afford at the moment and I happened to stumble across this one. Obviously link in the description below for the actual file and it looked decent enough and I could actually print a full size one. Now you might notice everywhere like on Etsy Marketplace, Amazon that they do sell replicas. However these replicas are around about like half size, quarter size, even some of them are just decals and stickers. So it was really good that there was actually no full size ones out there. So I downloaded the files and it comes in three parts, the top, the bottom and the middle connectors, which was great, which will give it extra stability because this was going to be a chunky build. So I got around to slicing these files and put them into my cure to make a slicer, which I use. And <laughs> the estimated print time was the first reality check of just how testing this would be. As you can see, the print wasn't just going to take a couple hours, even just one day. This was going to take multiple days just to print each half. It was all going swimmingly for the first three days or so. Uh, it was ending the top half as I was printing the top half first in the black PLA and got to the point where the black PLA actually ran out halfway through. Um, so I had to stay awake till about three o'clock in the morning just to get up and change the filament over to a red filament. All was going well. I went to bed around about 4am thinking that everything was fine, but then disaster struck. My partner Donna was cleaning up around and she accidentally knocked the plug off, which then disconnected the wire, stopped the whole print altogether. And with no power, there was no way of going back and getting the print layer where it stopped at to resume the print. So the first three days were wasted. So after three days and a bit of waiting and ending up with this, it was devastating. It sent me into a spiral. It hurt. The pain was unrecognizable. I ended up being a shell of a person. Yeah, I now I have now experienced the pain of waiting three days for a print only for it to fail. But shit happens. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> the field top half print. Uh, you do it in time. <laughs> this is the first three days, three and a bit, run out, switch over. Couple of hours later and nothing. Cool pattern though. But this did show that the actual print itself would look pretty good. And um, rather than be discouraged, it gave me the confidence to go forward. And I just ended up printing off the bottom half straight away after this one. So I kept on the red PLA, printed the whole bottom off. This took about two and a few bit days and it came out fantastic. I, I couldn't couldn't fold it at all and obviously with the World Cup as you can see like with the top half if we just zoom in there you can see like all the water and the texture so like any kind of I'd, I'd say uneven surfaces it's actually part of the design which which helped out a lot because that meant less sanding and it actually looked a lot more authentic when the final piece was done so I got back on with printing the second attempt at the top half uh, it went pretty well. Uh, you will notice on the time lapse that a lot of the supports ended up spaghettiing. Um, this was due to uh, it's either poor adhesion or the supports just weren't that good because I noticed the, there was a bit like spaghettiing here and there on on these, and a lot of the supports knocked over anyway, which it just made a mess of the uh, print bed. But the print actually finished. It it was done. No, no power issues, no accidental knockings. We got through and last was just the connectors which took about half an hour, which was quite relieving. And so now the fun part, to get the World Cup proper, because you've got to remember this is a trophy, this is a highly polished gold trophy. And highly polished gold is something that I couldn't really do. So what we had to do with this was I ended up sanding it with a very fine grit, as if you use too heavy a grit, it ends up tearing away some of the layers of the 3D print. And then you're just gonna to have to fill it in again, which I actually did this time. 
Um, so stuck them together, glued them, attached them, and it looked amazing put together. There was a thin line uh, where they connect, which I just had to put some filler in, sand it down, try and get it as smooth as possible. And then we were ready to go with the primer. So with primer and painting, I'm not good at all. Just check out my staircase. Um, I've not, I'm not really that crafty per se, even though I work in a quite a creative industry. I've never really done painting. I've never really done priming, painting, and then finishing with a lacquer. So this was a new experience for me. I used a primer, a white primer that I bought off Amazon a while back for a different project. However, the, it would be perfect for this one. And as I sprayed it, I realized that doing it in red PLA may not have been the best idea. But saying that, it turned into a strawberry milkshake kind of pink. Um, I wasn't sure whether it was just the color was dyeing the primer or the primer was melting the plastic a little bit. However, it did not look good. It did not give a smooth finish. So I ended up sanding it again. And then I switched over from the white primer. I moved on to more of an automotive gray one, which was only a couple of pound at my local Hyundai Baggins. So the switch worked and having a primed gray trophy, it was ready to paint. Now, like I say, it is a highly polished golden trophy. Obviously, the, they've got the money to do that. Uh, I don't. I didn't have the... Uh, budget for a chrome gold finish so I went with the next best thing which was an automotive gold uh, slightly glittery paint and I think it worked out really well so after a few layers of gold then there was the malachite base which is the two like green marbly kind of things at the bottom of the trophy for this I used just a basic green acrylic paint I was looking around for some greeny colours that were closer to the actual colours on the trophy itself and I came across Hooker's Green and I was not going to turn on a paint that was called Hooker's Green. I applied a few layers of the green on and then we were ready to finish it off. After a few layers of lacquer to seal it all in, left that to dry and we were done. That was it. And what should have taken about five to six days actually took around about 10 to 11. Uh, I did want the trophy ready for the start of the World Cup but here we are. And here it is. <laughs> Look at that, the size of it. It's quite some heft. I actually weighed it. It weighs around about just over one kilogram, so one and a quarter kilogram. Um, that's turned out really well. As you can see, it's got like a slight shine to it. The continents are smooth like they should be. Um, like I say, there's the textured water there and I don't know if you can see, but the, it is still a little obvious. I maybe should have sanded the uh, connection down a little bit. Um, by no means perfect, but this, this for a first attempt, this is a first big project of mine. And I think it's turned out great. So thank you for watching. Uh, please, you know, subscribe if you're not already. Uh, me and Craig will be printing off bigger and weirder things in the future. And catch us later.